Hello my loves, welcome back to Zeke's Lunchbox. Today we're gonna to tackle a video that I've been meaning to make for quite some time because I get quite a lot of questions about what art supplies I use. I don't use a very wide variety of things. I mostly have just found a few that I quite like and I just use those until I need to buy more. So let's get into Zeke's Lunchbox top 10 art supplies for now. Number 10, we have Matisse Gesso. Gesso is something that I I've been like mm, pretty boring walked past it every single time I was in the art store since I buy more low-end canvases pretty much you know the cheapest canvases you can possibly get I like to buy those because sometimes they come in really corny shapes and sizes so hexagonal triangle circular heart-shaped canvases you know every single bad corny canvas that you can find I will probably love it that's my thing the worst thing about those is that they're bad so you've got to get something real expensive to well it's not that expensive but it's pricey to put right on top of that you can use other gessos I just find this stuff you pay what you get really it's good you don't need like a lot of layers of it you just need the one you can water it down a little bit but it's quite stretchy you know you can stretch this paint quite a lot and it's just really really nice this is my third tub so I go through quite a lot of this stuff it is worth it it's so good if you're wondering why it's so hard to paint on those lower grade canvases, it's because they use bad gesso and boom, you've got a solution now. All right, so that brings me to number nine. <sighs> number nine is pink card. You've probably seen me use this quite a bit. I get lots of questions about what this stuff is. It is pretty much the lowest grade, well it's not the lowest grade, but it's just your standard colored paper. You know, the stuff that's like in racks a lot of the time in art stores or two dollar stores. I just liked that stuff because one, it was pink. Two, the tooth, there is no tooth. You know, with watercolor paper, it does have quite a bit of tooth, you know, so those of you who don't know what a tooth is on paper, that just means like the bumpiness I'm pretty sure on paper correct me if I'm wrong but do it nicely please when you scan paper that doesn't have too much of a tooth it looks really nice and it doesn't have that much texture you just have the intentional texture that you normally have with the paintings that you're doing on them this paper is good I wouldn't recommend it for anybody who is starting off because you can flood the paper tear it you need to know what you're doing with this stuff because it's not made for art it's made for posters you know so this is more of an intermediate medium. I love it. I don't know, maybe you will as well. So that takes me to number eight. I was gifted these pencils for one of my birthdays, I believe. I've been a very colorful person my whole life. My partner bought these for me. I think just because they're, they're fluoro. Fluoro pencils, like that's pretty mad, all right? They're not chalky pencils as well. They're, they've got a good texture to them. They're not very opaque, so don't expect like amazing opaqueness with this. I've yet to find any medium that does fluoro that's really thick and opaque, and I'm talking about that across all mediums. These are awesome. I find the thickness of them is really fun. It really forces you to not be very delicate when you're drawing in your sketchbook. You can just kind of be like, Ooh, you know, like do like big fat messes with them and the colors are really great. And I, I also really like them on an aesthetic level. I feel like the juxtaposition between the brown stem of the pencil and then the pop of color is like really nice you know like these are it's like something you'd find in some aesthetic catalog so I'll have these linked all in the show notes the ones I use the most are pink obviously god I've got a problem I love the pink one I feel like it's really great when you're topping it off on top of some gouache that's how I normally use them anyway you know the fluoroness really comes out they're just they're just tasty I feel somebody who just wants to play around and make some fun things I want to have like a loose time and you you use pencils quite a bit and you love color, I definitely recommend these. Okay, so that takes me to number seven. Oh, these were also a present and god damn, these made me happy. They are mechanical colored pencils. Ah! 
so good. A little bit over a year ago, I hardly drew. I just went straight into the painting without doing any studies, and I think it's really bad. You need to be studying and researching a piece before you get into it. I think the problem for me was because I was using just normal pencils. I use mechanical pencils normally, and I've got a bunch of other pencils, but I just don't really like them. I feel like drawing with greys and blacks is really boring, all right? <sighs> My partner knows this because he's an artist as well and he can see when I'm being bad. So he bought me colored mechanical pencils. I'll have the brand for these all in the show notes as well. Oh man, they're so good. They've got a little grip on them. Just like every other mechanical pencil, it's got an eraser on the end. The eraser doesn't really do much. I mean, it's okay, but it's not great. I just like these because they're really fun. They come in all sorts of different colors. I have every color, obviously, because we all know I'm a color addict. Obviously, pink is my favorite because I'm a freak. Pink I sketch with quite a lot. I do a lot of body studies with this because it just, it makes me just really happy. The biggest downfall with these is the lead snaps quite a lot. The lead is quite soft, a more crayon feel rather than like a chalky pencil feel. So they're quite soft and they break pretty easily. If you're like me, you don't like sketching all that much. Try mechanical pencils because they're so fun. They're amazing. I love these. And that takes me to number six. This one's probably going to be a little bit underwhelming for some people because they're like, excuse me, I use that all in primary school and high school. Um, that's not special whatsoever. You know what? They're not that special and that's why they're so amazing. It's colorway pens. I love these. They're just your standard big four colorway baby. The ones that I'm using are the more pastel colors. I find they're perfect for uh, for when I'm just sketching in my sketchbook. I don't need to use all the other colored pens that I've got. I've just got the one. It's got all the colors that I normally use. I obviously use pink and purple the most. I use pen quite a lot in my illustrations in my sketchbook just to like do the lashes or like the dark bits of the lip, nostrils. Yeah, these are fun. When I found that they did it in this colorway, I know they've been doing it in this colorway for quite some time, but I was walking around the store and I saw these and I was like, hang on, that's pretty interesting. And I've been using them. I would say I use these every day. Isn't that crazy? Don't go past them. That takes me to number five. Again, we're gonna stick with some classics here. It's the Beak Classic Fine Pens. When I buy these, I normally get them in a pack of 20 because I use them for just writing down notes. Um, I use them for the same use as the four-way color pencils, just like to do like the little pupils and stuff. I love these. Like, I know a lot of artists use these just because the line is so fine. <laughs> I just unintentionally make rhymes all the time. Don't go past these, they're awesome and don't be snooty about these, all right? They're good. Number four, I was gifted this last Christmas only because I requested it. <laughs> it's this new sketchbook that I'm using. Oh man. Sketchbooks are really where you can blow some serious money. This in Australia, I would say is $80. $80, crazy. Oh man, I would not buy this for a beginner whatsoever, but if you're an intermediate artist who works with lots of mediums, mostly gouache, watercolor, and then some pens and pencils, this is a great mixed media watercolor book. I'll have this linked in the show notes as well. So I think it's by Handbook and it's a travelogue. It's got this really great elastic thing on it. So when your book gets a little bit fat, it like condenses it down. I also I love that it's got like this really beautiful like linen wrapped on it. The paper in it is, uh, I would say maybe like a, a hundred GSM possibly. It's got a tooth, but it's really fine. Not completely flat, it still has texture. It's so nice for watercolor. If you're somebody who sketches watercolor quite a lot, instead of getting a pad, you know those pads that have the quite thick ones that you can get at art stores, get this instead. It's so much better. I don't like getting journals with rings on them because I like to stack them on a book shelf and I just think they look so much prettier and this is hands down the best sketchbook I've ever had in my life. It's exactly what I need for my purpose. 
Oh my god, I didn't even mention the best thing about it. Look how flat that is. There's no like annoying lump in the middle. So if you're just playing, you don't have to go page by page. You can just go spread right out. It's so good. Oh my gosh. I get excited to draw in this. The only downside is because it's so expensive and so nice. If you're somebody who's like a little bit scared to draw and you're like, I don't want to ruin it. It's so precious. That might be a problem. <laughs> if you're someone who has tackled that issue, recommend this one. Okay, so top three favorite art supplies is gouache. I started using gouache when I went to university. I had a color theory class. Our professor told us that we needed to buy gouache that we could mix and learn about colors. Prior to that, I was just using a watercolor palette, the ones with like the cakes on the inside. And I was trying to make like finalized work with that stuff. And it was okay, but then I did run into a few problems like doing the whites in the eyes and I just found that it wasn't blending very well so as soon as I discovered gouache it was like the answer to all my prayers and all the problems that I had were completely erased when I started using gouache. I use the Winsor Newton designer gouache. I haven't tried any of the other brands. I'd like to try whole bean and this is more just the stuff that's readily available in Australia. I love this stuff because it's so pigmented. If you know gouache you can put it in your palette and then reuse it a couple days later and just more use it as a more watered down version. I use this stuff all the time in my sketchbook. I've got this palette here that I use quite often and I just use this for my sketchbook. I don't have many negatives about the gouache except that it is quite expensive. I bought these a while ago and they're pretty dry now. Because they were so expensive it's, it's kind of a shame. They've dried out quite a bit and I can't get them out of the tube but again they're quite old so if you use them a lot it's definitely worth the money. I'll have all of these linked in the show notes below as well. My favorite colors are the Bengal Rose, this primary yellow. I got this big fat white because at the time I was using a lot of it and I, I fell in love with acrylics and then I stopped painting with these but yeah these are these are awesome. I do recommend these if you are into gouache because you can use them quite thick as well. Gouache is very very diverse. I really like it. All right, so number two of my favorite art supplies would be angled brushes. I don't use very expensive brushes. I typically buy my brushes in sets unless I really need a very specific brush. All of these I believe are from those sets that you can get. I, I typically like brushes that just say acrylic and gouache. But they're quite smooth and quite soft. They typically are those white brushes. I love angle brushes because this is what you need to blend. If you've ever wondered how the heck do I blend with acrylics, this is it, all right? Like a flat brush just doesn't quite do it. I don't know what it is about the angle brushes, but this really, really helps in getting your blends just right. Mine are quite old now and quite fuzzy. I don't mind the fuzziness because for me, it actually helps when it comes to blending. That's all I got to say for the brushes. These are my secret weapon when it comes to blending in acrylics. All right, so we are at number one, my favorite favorite art supplies ever. This is going to be my favorite for quite some time, for years to come I believe. Da -da -da -da! Matisse acrylic structure. It is waterproof, flexible, light fast, acrylic polymer emulsion. Lots of people ask me what kind of paints I use. I use acrylic structure. It feels like oil but you can water it down with water rather than all the chemicals and other things that you need to use with oil. So it's quite thick, incredible incredibly pigmented. When I decided to start painting properly, I didn't lean towards oils just because I was really intimidated by all of the, the linseed oil and all the other accoutrements that come together when it comes to oil painting. And because I had already done some work with gouache, I just wanted to step up a little bit more and get something that was in between a gouache and an oil. And that is where this stuff comes in. So Matisse acrylic comes in two varieties. It comes in flow and structure. The pigments are great in the both of them. It just really depends how thick and creamy you want your paint. I find because I don't necessarily use my paints to build 
texture in the actual paint. No, I used to swear by structure, but I do have a couple of Matisse flows as well, and they're just as good. Every single color is quite different. That is probably my biggest con with these paints. Some paints are a lot creamier than others. I find over time, the texture of them has been different when I repurchase similar colors. You know, that just kind of happens with time because pigments are from the earth, they're a limited resource. That's just bound to happen when you're going into pigmented materials. The colors you cannot beat. I know lots of people would just say, why don't you just blend the colors yourself? Honestly, they make it so beautifully that you can't go past it. All the different kinds of tones of paint and a very specific color, they make it the best. My biggest complaint with the variety of colors that they've got and they've got a big variety they only have two purples in their collection I wish they would expand that just a little bit more and specifically just with one color I have had to get a Joe Sonia's purple to find a more warmer purple so they've got a dioxide purple and then like a pastel purple and those are great but they're quite cold purples and I wanted a more warm magenta e purple that's really the only color that is missing in the collection for me but every other color in between they've got and pretty much every single tube I've bought from them has been amazing. My favorite colors at the moment aqua green it's in the series two so they've got some paints that are more expensive than others i do have to say these are incredibly expensive i've been collecting these paints for the last couple of years i spent a few hundred dollars on this paint when i make my finalized paintings this is the medium that i'm using i'm not using anything else it's just this a big tub of white my brushes canvas and gesso that's what i use to make a final piece i don't use anything else so if you are somebody who wants to start building a collection of acrylics this is the stuff to go with but it will take you a couple of years to build the collection because they are quite expensive. Primary Red is from the series 4. The larger the number the more specialized and expensive it's going to be. I didn't want to buy this Primary Red for quite some time because I think it's like in Australia this is $30 this one tube. Isn't that crazy? $30 but it's worth it. And again Matisse is an Australian brand as I've just learned so you'll be supporting Australian made products when you buy this. It's seriously so good. I can't rave enough about this. I've converted a lot of people to use this stuff so hopefully I'm influencing you guys to do the same. But I do want to collect more of these. I love these so so much. Yeah there you go guys. We have made it to the end of my top 10 art supplies. I hope this video has helped you to find what supplies may work for you and thank you so much for watching. Extra points for the people who have noticed that I have cockroaches in my hair. Uh, I made I made these in high school. I've had them ever since and if anybody likes John Waters and hairspray you're my kind of person. Thank you so much for watching and make sure you like, subscribe and bell ding dong that button. I will zeek to you later. Bye. Love ya.